hate that stupid freaking printer. Hello. Hello, folks. Welcome back. I am the one, the only Hobo Tom. Um, I was having some previous technical difficulties with my printer. Um, I had to, had to let that printer know who's boss. But again, like always, you're here to tell me that you're the boss because you are my beloved YouTube audience. Um, so we'll see how, so we'll see what happens this week. Uh, well, I'll, I'll, I'll save that to the towards the end. But right now, I'm here to give some shout outs. Let's see here. Mitch Canellis. Thank you, sir. You always win by dirty pin, though. And Evil Tommy NC 2020. Holy shit! And with all that being said and done, I am the one, the only, I am be, be very quickly becoming a real hobo, Hobo Tom. I can tell I've gone, I've gone scruffy again. It only took one week to get this back, like literally like two weeks. And I still have to, I have to trim this again sometime. Hopefully if I can get back to work anytime soon. That desk is a freaking mess. I'd like to thank everyone for watching, especially those watching my live streaming. And I do plan to do a little bit more live streaming as the situation permits. Um, I do need to find out when Triple A. Oh, I could do that almost right now. I do need to find out when Triple A is having its event. So if I look kind of confused and dazed and and, and, and staring wanderly at stuff, um, it's because I'm looking up things kind of randomly. Also, for this week's live impact show during the commercials if you the youtube audience have any wrestling entrances or entrance music that you would like to see please let me know so therefore um i can't show showing commercials is boring but oh that's that's why showing commercials is boring so just like i did last time Let's see here. PC. No, that's not. Oh, shoot. CML Super VN. That's Friday. Power CML. It's Tuesday. Lucha Tube. That's Wednesday. Oh, shoot. They're not. I don't know. I have to figure this out. Because I know last week. See, let's take a look at what happened last week. It was no, it wasn't Friday because I woke up Friday morning and I saw that. So I don't know. I'll have to do some research, folks. See, so, actually, you know how I'm gonna do. Let's see here. Well, while I'm doing that, let's talk about some. Monday Night Raw. Uh, this was this show for some reason felt very long. I do apologize for being somewhat distracted. I just want to get some stuff done here, which I probably should be doing later. But I like to get some sleep because I have stuff to do. Let's see here. Program dos. Oh, they already played that. Lucha Fighter. Program dos. When was this? Let's see, here. no, I don't care what what you say. Asuka's revenge. Let's see. Here. 
That was the 27th. Shoot, they did. Wait. Wait a second. That's today. What was this? Oh, wow. I could have watched this. Wait a second. That's pretty cool. So right now, I know um, even if you've seen my thing, even AAA has gone to crowdless arena matches. I think they're doing that, I think, more so f really for television contracts because I have no clue how AAA actually survives anything. Let me just take a look at this one last thing. And I promise I'll be more focused. Yeah, today is the 27th. Run Fusion Raw. Oh, that I think it might have come on at 10. That's weird. Oh well, enough of that nonsense. I, I I have to talk about some Monday Night Raw before I before I run out of time on my counter. So starts off with MVP in the VIP lounge. You have Rey Mysterio, Alistair Black, and Apollo Cruz there. Uh, of course, MVP is not going to let him talk because that's what he does. And then whoa! <laughs> All of a sudden, Zelina Vega comes out wearing those stripper shoes. Like, yeah, you know the stripper shoes, like the freaking four to six inch, like, platform shoes. Yeah. Stripper shoes. And wow, she looks hot. Hot! And showing off that hip tattoo and side boobage. Oh, Alistair Black. You're, you're, you're the ultimate male because other men envy you. And other men want to be you. <sighs> Obviously, that's not me. Um, so, of course, Zelina, Zelina Vega, uh, a stripper Vega. Oh, it's, uh, Zelina Vega came out with Angel Garza, Andrade, and Austin Theory. And once those three people came out, interrupted the faces. Wait, you have three heels. You have three faces. Hala, 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 playa! It's going to be a impromptu, very long six-man tag match. Uh, so then, of course, this leads us to the, the impromptu six-man tag match, as with the teams I just mentioned. Now, Black, Alistair Black's doing very traditional wrestling, and I wonder how weird it is for him to be to be wrestling and his wife like yelling at and favoring the other person. Indeed. Uh, let's see here. So Black starts step over toe hold and the ham hammerlock and the counter and the hammerlock. This was actually a very technical beginning. I do appreciate the fact that Alistair Black's becoming a more technical wrestler. Uh, it's not his strength per se. His strength, again, is the strikes. So it's better to see him with that. But again, it's good to see wrestlers doing actual wrestling moves. Then let's see here. That was the uh, so he tagged in Apollo Apollo Cruz, poor little, and I had a feeling, but they 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 kind of swerved me on this, or that's actually the wrong way to use the term as listening to the Jim Cornette show. I actually got axed off my top ten YouTube show list. That's okay. I have a pretty good list though. I like that list. It's a very good list. Uh, I'll, I'll get more into that later, I think. But so with this again, Apollo Cruz held him up there in that delayed vertical suplex, had him thinking. Yeah, it'd be like this. What am I doing? Yep, there we go. Have him delayed, have him thinking, let all the blood rush into the head, and then eventually, of course, fall backwards. Yeah, it's so great to see. The thing is, without the crowd. The fact that these six wrestlers are so loud and very vocal, they're trash talking, and you have Zelina Vega just being hot blooded Latin woman outside the ring. Only way to put that makes it not feel as empty, I guess. Then Ray uh, got his tag in. Again, Ray so, so innovative, even at an advanced age. Or an old being an older person, I don't know how Rey Mysterio does it. I go out there, I play a little bit of catch with myself, or I do some home repairs, and I'm blown up after like half an hour. 
Not, well, not so much with the catch, but I'll tell you what, when I had to fix that roof, though, I don't know what it was. Swinging that hammer for like freaking an hour, it felt like, well, actually, it did take me an hour. So, yeah, so I was swinging the hammer for like 50 minutes, 45 minutes. There's some time to move the ladder and stuff. I was blown up. But with this, I mean, Ray, Ray Mysterio, Ray Mysterio, we're not worthy. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. Eventually, Andrade is, gets into the ring. Uh, he gets stuck in the 619 position, but ah, uh, his buddies pull him out of it. And of course, Ray lowers the ropes. Everyone goes flying. <laughs> Andrade. So when they're back in, back in the ring, so then they go to commercial break. Andrade gets starts to beat up on Alistair Black. Selena Vega. You're sleeping on the couch tonight there, sweetie. Then it's Austin Theory's turn to be on. <laughs> Poor Alistair Black. And, and, and Selena Vega should be moved into the garage to sleep there for a night. Wow. Then let's see here. Where am I in my notes? Uh, Austin Theory does that, that show of strength, that kind of stretch. That's always good. Uh, Black does make his... They come back the big kick, which is just amazing looking. Then it's Ray and Andrade. Ray hits the seed, sent on from off the ropes. Ray forcefully, like literally, like like thrown out, like sliding wise out of the ring. So great to see Ray. Now reverse the gorilla press. Hit the DDT, and then he tagged in Apollo Cruz for a standing moonsault. That was great. Uh, Cruz. Again, he was very consistent, and we'll see what happens later with Paul Cruz. But then, oh, uh, what's his face? Guess that leg, that that that. Oh, Austin Theory does that cross leg neck breaker. Oh, it's like the suplexes. It's a cross legged suplex, a switchblade, I think it's called. So for dropping him, he does like the tiebreaker across the neck. Ouch. You have to be really sm smart to take that. Uh, Cruz gets low bridged by Andrade. Then all of a sudden it's spot fast media. Just like you thought it would be. Uh, Crew counters the hemlock DDT with a blue thunder bomb. He picks up the win and Andrade eats the pin. This was a fun opening match. It was good long. Told enough of a story. There was enough action in it. I, the only the only real thing I have with this match, and I can't even say because it, it was a good distraction. Like every two minutes, they would like just pan over to see Zelina Vega and and that stripper outfit that she was wearing. What can you say? This is a fun surf and turf match, though. And then let's see here. So then it begins a top ten list. Ten, ten. 10, 10 lists for Triple H top 10 moments. I guess on Raw. On number 10 was the formation of Degeneration X. Because I got two words for you. Suck it. Uh, number 9 was Triple H versus Sting at WrestleMania 30, I think. I think whatever it was in 2015. And then, of course, the NWO and, and D-Generation has come out during that. Then Charlie's backstage. She tries to interview Andrade. But Vega says, no, no, no. Charlie, you talk to me about Andrade. Andrade says a bunch of stuff in Spanish. It's good to see them speaking their native language. It makes them, the fact that they're the heels, that much more impressive. And then Paul Cruz comes out. See, 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 see I win? I pinned you now. I'll pin you later. Oh, oh, yeah, hombre. Oh, yeah, gringo. Is Apollo Crews a gringo? That's an interesting question. I have to ask. I have to ask some friends about that. If, if, if a person of color is a gringo, or such as reserved for a person of my skin tone, these are questions you want to know. And then, so there we have, so from there, so he challenges them to a match later tonight. Then it's a Drew and Seth Rollins recap. Drew McIntyre. And then number eight um, it is Brock versus Triple H. Number seven. Oh, the infamous 
hammerlock position with, with Trish Stratus. Oh, when Steffi McMahon walked in. Maybe HBK was right. Maybe she has no fun stuff. Or maybe she's way too much fun stuff. Whoa, I have to try and wheel over there. Then we have Asuka in a triple threat match. This was actually terrible. Because this could have been so good. Asuka taking Asuka versus Nia Jax versus Shannon Baszler. Match never starts. All three women just start brawling on the outside. Uh, Nia get kicks, get, get double kicked in the head by both Asuka and Shayna Baszler. Shayna tries to set the ladder, but Shayna does not know the rule of ladders. For the most part, when you're setting up a ladder against a superstar, at least, not an NXT jobber, you're setting up a ladder against a superstar, you set up the, t you set up the ladder, guess what? You're going to be thrown into said ladder. So Asuka tosses her into the ladder. Uh, Nia Jax then destroys both of them. Nia Jax then just like, goes into the ring with ladder. <laughs> It's, it's, I've been watching Star Wars, and if you can think of the one scene with the uh, sand people raising the gaffy, the gaffy stick, <laughs> that's what she's like with a ladder. She just raises the ladder over her head, and I don't know. That was a piece of toast, because that didn't even happen. It was a no contest. Piece of toast. Then, whoa! Lana came out in this different outfit. She looked so much different. She, like, lost the makeup, which makes... For some reason, and I saw the YouTube special about the NXT women and their makeup, they all look cuter without their makeup. I've never understood that. I've never understood... Even actually, I used to tell it to my girlfriend when I had her. It's like, you don't need all that makeup. It's like, oh, but we're going out. We're going to Walmart. I, I don't wear pants to Walmart anymore. What are you talking about? But yeah, like, Lana's all like, she has a new outfit. She has some sparkly blue sequiny thing. Her hair is a darker color, a more natural looking color. Uh, her face is more natural looking. Her, 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 her chest is more natural looking. Maybe Bobby Lashley's having a good impact on her. Who knows? But yeah, and it's Bobby Lashley's like, babe. I want you. I don't want you to come out. Why? Uh, you're too distracting. You're too beautiful. Aww. So that was good to see. Then Bobby Lashley takes on four Denzel, D D Youngsters. Um, the good thing about this, and they have a new ref there in WWE. Bravo, WWE. You know they let a whole bunch of people go. Uh, I don't know what her name is. I've never seen her before. But that doesn't mean anything because it's been, as far as I know, she debuted, she was supposed to debut when NXT last came to town. And that was well over a month ago. It's been a whole month. Wow. That's weird. I wonder how history is going to reflect on this weird month. I don't know. Whatever. I digress. But Bobby Lashley, you this guy, um, he's got a very Collegian style. He, he tried. Didn't too much, but he tried. And Bobby Lashley's like, uh uh. Overhead belly to belly suplex, some other moves, and a spear. No Lana there. This was okay. Um, once uh, poor Denzel came out, I, I knew he was jobbing this, so it was very predictable. Therefore, he gets a can of soup. Then there's an ad for the WWE, for the newest WWE game. WWE 2K20, WWE Battle, Battleground, that's right. Um, it's very cartoonish looking, it's very arcade style. If you've ever seen the Backyard Wrestling games, it kind of looks like that, except for Charlotte Fair looks a lot chubbier. So does Becky Lynch. Uh, I think in the one preview, Becky Lynch is on fire! She goes en fuego mode, and John Cena goes fed to an alligator. It's different. Uh, they are pu pushing back WWE series games. The next one will be 2K20. Nineteen was the buggy one. This 20. Whatever it is, whatever the next year is, I forget. I'm still playing like 
2K17, I think. That's that's where you see the Daytona Beach bomb fight leak. I'll have to talk about that too. But that's okay. Then we have Liv Morgan and Ruby Riot again. I hope something different. I don't know. See, this is a weird no-win situation because they're either doing 50-50 booking or they're just having a repeat of their last match. Unfortunately, this one is the latter where it's just really a repeat of the last match. Uh, Ruby Riot still looks great. Let's see here. Ruby, again. Um, the classic collar and elbow tie-up right into the hair, right into the hair, heel pull, take, hair, heel, hair, pull, take down. Say that five times faster. And then Liv, Liv missed the turtle stomp. So right now, for the most part, Ruby Riot is pretty in charge. She hit the, the, the right kick, which is a terrible finish anyway. Just like a swing kick to the head. No fanfare, nothing. I guess it's good as a catch finish. Not really for a heel. Uh, terrible finish anyway. Liv Morgan kicks out of it. Yay! The Liv Morgan. Then there was... Getting a little bit more wrestling between the two. And, and then there was that catch Oblivion, which is that, like, springboard, like, that... Reverse catapult, reverse springboard flatliner. Love Morgan was called a blue view. Uh, it's the same finish it was last time. I, if I was Ruby Wright, at least I cheat for the 50 50 booking because at least that would make it a little bit more different. And then we see, if they see, you can't really beat me. And there was no mention of Sarah Logan. So Logan, we miss you. Go to go to um AEW as Crazy Mary Dobson though. And then Liv like had an interview and uh trying to figure out who she was. Very millennial thing. Overall, uh, uh, this was a ham sandwich. If they do this again next week, it, it goes down to a can of soup. Because, yeah, it went from a cheeseburger, ham sandwich, can of soup, and then it's like, okay, the toast. I mean, you have to be a really spectacular wrestler, or you need a pair of spectacular wrestlers to really pull off four matches in a row like that. Ruby Riot's good. Not quite that good. Liv Morgan, not quite there either. Then we get to moment number six. Uh, that was the Triple H's 97 King of the Ring moment. And then Char Charlie is in the back. She's interviewing Nia Jax. My actions. Poor Charlie just gets bullied half the time. Viking Raiders put a, put a little promo in. And then there was moment five. Where it was the NXT Invasion. Uh, that happened in 2019. Happened. Yeah, I forget if it was 19 or 18 now. Happened last last year though. Then we had a kid that was taking on the returning Jinder Mahal. It's good to see Jinder Mahal back. So it starts off. Uh, Jinder Mahal just kicks poor Akira Tozawa. A big back body drop. Uh, they wind up on the outside. Akira gets tossed to the ring apron. And back to the barricade, because I am the barricade. I am the barricade. I am the barricade. Cuckoo, kachoo. And, of course, Jinder Mahal won by the, by the Colossus. I was shocked that this was a squash match. It's still a, a good match. It's uh, Jinder Mahal wins with a Colossus. It's another ham sandwich match. By this time of the show, I'm like, this is getting pretty long. Um, then poor Charlie's back. She's leaning in Vegas. Says, no, you can't interview anyone anymore. And then, <laughs> yeah, Charlie S-I-X. Because Angel Garza came up to her and gave her a flower. Charlie, good for you. Hey, if it doesn't work out between you and Angel Garza, there's always this guy, Charlie. 
And then number four, Quattro. Uh, when Triple H it is Vince Impression. You're fired. Uh, with Heartbreak Kid as Shane McMahon. So that's. So from there, let's see, here we go to Andrade taking on Apollo Crews. I do like the fact that Andrade is great at trash talking. He's like, my belt! He raises up. Rough tries to take it. No, you can't touch that. That's mine. Um, again, he's so loud in the ring. Apollo Crews is relatively quiet. Uh, Zelina Vega is also there looking like, looking like the stripper that I guess she's supposed to be. Who knows? And wearing six-inch shoes just makes you look like a stripper. Especially when it's that obvious. Uh, you can tell us, like, I've seen those shoes, and the last time I saw... Oh, I remember where I've seen those shoes. Yes. Um, I guess the one funny strip club story I shall, I shall tell. It was kind of funny. Uh, when I was much younger and, and crazier in my youth, I went to a strip club. Dancer was giving a, a hot Asian dancer too. She was giving me a, a, a table dance because they didn't do lap dances at the time. And it was still only $10 too. Um, and she was wearing those heels and she slipped off the table, literally fell on my lap. So I, I tried to brace her and catch her. The bouncer guy gave me the dirtiest look. It's like, why are you touching her? It's like, why are you touching her, you piece of scumbag pile? She's like, it's okay. Then he just like had his eye on me. I'm like, please, sir, don't kill me. Because again, he was one of those 300 pound gorillas. You do not mess with 300 pound gorillas. Uh, where, where was I going with this? Oh, yeah. So again, it's a classic wrestling match for the most part. Rope running from the headlock. Very classic. Andrade's chops. Still hurt me, though. Woo! And Andrade starts to work over Apollo's knee because he missed um, some spots. Thankfully, it wasn't the Sid Vicious Shinbreaker spot. So that was just horrific looking. Uh, Apollo Crews then kind of comes back. A bunch of punches. Big splash into the corner. Then an overhead belly to belly. Again, that was uh, a standing moonsault. That's so pretty to see. Uh, there was a uh, Andrade hit the drop toe hold onto Apollo, though that wound that meant Apollo Cruz went up in the corner for the, of course, the knees, knees, knees. There was a press slam that got countered into a DDT. Then big power slam by by Cruz and another knee bump outside the ring, and the rest like nope, 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 he cannot continue. So it was one of those things. It's an official's dis officials officials discretion, or an official stoppage. This was a good match, with the exception because again we've just seen Shannon Baser do this with like arms and elbows. I don't think he's a legit injured because generally, if you're legit injured, like they will be out there very quickly. So, my is that ending. This is a good cheeseburger match. Oh, wait, what did I do? Oh, there we go. Number three of the Triple H moments. We have the evolution with Flair, Batista, and Randy Orton. Then the Street Profits pull out a promo. There was a Becky Lynch. Um, it was the women's triple threat for all the belts for WrestleMania. Then we have Ricochet and Cedric Alexander taking on 2.0. 2.0. Or, or whatever they're called now. I don't care what they're called. They're still 2.0 from Chikara. It's so hard to call these matches because they're so freaking fast. Uh, Ricochet and Cedric, they're so fast. I mean... So fast, and the tandem offense they do. At one time, uh, Cedric Alexander used the other guy of 2.0 to pull off, like, a magic killer. I'm like, whoa. Again, that was great. Uh, 2.0 does get their offense in. Very very heelish, very strike-heavy. Uh, a, lot, a lot of dirty wrestling going for the dirty pin, stuff like that. 
Then Ricochet just the jumping flippy stuff. <sighs> Ricochet, Cedric Alexander, we're not worthy. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. Uh, then eventually there is the stomp into the flatliner. They haven't figured out what a good fin what a good tandem finisher is. For the most part, any tandem finisher these two do is an amazing finisher. This was a fun match. I can't. I don't even know how 2.0 got here to Orlando. They're supposed to be back in Canada. Go back to Canada. You bring the coronavirus to us. Boo 2.0. Boo Canadians. I blame Canadians for coronavirus in the states. Just my opinion, though. Uh, but this, for the most part, it was a good cheeseburger of a match. And then there was uh, number two. It was when a Triple H moment. Dos. Dos Akis. Of course, it's Akis like, suck it, Akis. I don't even know how to say suck it in Spanish, so that's okay. Uh, it was when DX invades WCW. And then I was shocked at the first one. Then uh, Charlie tries to interview Apollo. Apollo has has the crutches now. Not happening, Charlie. Sorry, I'm crying. Goodbye. Then Triple H. Numero uno. Primero. One. Moment. Was when he pulled the squad. And then comebacks eight months later. I don't even know how eight months later you can come back from a pulled quad. That hurts. He did somehow, though. And then we had a Jerry the King Lawler was there for the contract signing between oh, uh, Drew McIntyre and, and Seth Rollins. We all know how that goes. Someone's getting beat up. They have to do one of these contract signings where, where someone has to bleed and sign the contract in blood. I remember those. Those were pretty cool. I think Stone Cold Steve Austin and Undertaker did that once. I want to say there's a few other times it's been done as well. So again, I want to see that come back. That's the only way this could have been better because we all know what happens with the tables when the table gets involved. Table gets tossed. Buddy Murphy tries to make the save. Buddy Murphy he he just annoyed Drew McIntyre. Eats a claymore. Uh, Seth gets claymore. I hope th this is not the ghost show, so it's not necessarily Drew McIntyre standing tall yet. I think it's way too early to take the belt off him yet. They have to build up a little bit more. And Seth needs to be beat up. Seth is the Monday Night Messiah, it's just an annoying prick bastard. So, And that was Raw in a nutshell. Again, it was a ham sandwich of a Raw. Unless you're a real football person and following the draft, you know, I, I, I have no clue what's going on. Um, a little bit more about this week. I have no clue if I'm going to be doing any live triple A things. I should have asked for that reminder. But if they're going to do it Monday, because Thursday, I don't know, I'll figure out something. But tomorrow I live stream Impact Wrestling. Wednesday is my review of AEW. Unless something major changes, I'm still doing that. Thursday, we're going to have another top 10 list. So this is going to be the 10 things you can watch on YouTube during uh, coronavirus pandemic zombie, vi zombie apocalypse time. Fridays, because that's a lot easier to make than actually figuring out stuff to do. Friday is going to be Smackdown. Off for the weekend again. So I'd like to thank everyone watching. Um, please like, share, comment, and subscribe. I'll try to be a little bit more active there. I know uh, Rowan, who I gave a shout out to last week, said, said go to this. I have, have a bunch of stuff to do. I think tomorrow I have to figure out how to use a power washer. The, the house does need to be cleaned on the outside. So I'll have time Wednesday to do that because I'm going to do it on Wednesday. Thursday, I do have some grocery shopping to do so. I have to hobo that night too and figure out unemployment because I don't know. They don't. Florida unemployment's all screwed through to, to, to holy heavens. Who knows? So I can thank everyone for watching. Please like, share, comment.